Okay, if everything is looking good, I am gonna get started here. So I have a F pencil. This paper here is about, I think I said six by nine. I could be wrong, it might be more like five by eight. Anyways, I have a size six round brush and a size two round brush. And then for paint colors today, I have, um, let's see, I have a yellow ochre, burnt sienna, burnt umber, and indigo over here. And then besides that, I have water that I'll use. I have a paper towel here. And I think that that is all. Um, we're like so out of paper towels. I've had this one for <laughs> like weeks and we just need to buy new paper towels. But it does go to show, it goes to show you don't really need to replace them as often as you think but okay so I'll put that there so today we're going to be painting this wintry cottage scene right and I did two different versions of it that I liked so I did this one which I shared over on Instagram and on Patreon this one I did last night and I actually prefer the look of this one um, if you if you trace the sketch that I provided this would be perfect They're bo they'll both work same dimensions, this one is just a little bit more zoomed in. Or sorry, the other one's more zoomed in. This one's uh, a smaller little cottage, as you can see. So I think I'm gonna reference this one as I paint today. So I'm just gonna put this out of frame, move my old coffee. <laughs> and let's get started with sketching. And I got a question that said, is there an alternative to indigo? Absolutely, you can use blue. You can just use blue if you want to. Um, or you can use Payne's gray if you have it. Um, as you can see that there's not like a ton of blue in this painting, but just a little bit. But you definitely want to have some sort of blue color. So let's get started with the sketch here. If you haven't sketched already, sorry, my chair is so squeaky. Quiet chair. So <laughs> about like, let's think like kind of about halfway halfway here over towards the right we're gonna get started with this cottage and truthfully I I was just kind of thinking about it. I feel like drawing a structure is a little bit more intimidating to me than like flowers flowers are super easy at least at this point I feel very comfortable teaching that um, teaching how to draw a structure is a little bit more challenging honestly actually I'm gonna go down a little bit lower and so we're gonna just kind of draw the roof line. And I forgot to grab an eraser. One second. Truthfully, when it comes to sketching, especially before you start painting, an eraser is the most important part. Okay, so here's my little cottage here. So we're gonna start with the roof line. Kind of go straight back. And we're gonna do kind of this like English cottage style. So kind of that thick thatched roof. It's a lot easier to follow the, <laughs> the sketch that I did probably than to follow along with what I'm doing here, but try our best. Okay, so let's start with this little chimney. Kind of work your way down. And then we're gonna thicken it up right here. And I hope you'll forgive me here because I am gonna take a little bit of extra time with this cottage. Um, when I'm drawing something like this versus a flower, you can really kind of get away with it being really imperfect uh, when you're drawing flowers because nobody notices or cares if your petals are exactly right. Um, but I do feel like with a structure, it kind of makes sense for you to, you know, get the balance right and everything like that. Okay, so I have my chimney in. Just behind it, I'm gonna draw another line up there and then a line just right next to it. And if you want to pause this and go download that sketch, I put the link in the chat or below um, over on Patreon and it's free. You can download that sketch, 
download the list of supplies, and just kind of follow along at your pace. You can pause this video at any time if you're, if you're falling behind a little bit, and it won't, you can just press play whenever you're ready. Okay, so you can see I kind of doing that thick roof line. Let me pull this in just a little bit closer. I want you to be able to really see what, what I'm doing here today. Let me know if you can see the sketch okay. Okay, so let's finish up the structure here. So we're doing three lines, okay? So these two are about the same length, and then the line back here is gonna be a little bit shorter. So you have that kind of vanishing point perspective. Draw a line to connect these two lines. Draw a line just right here. Um, notice how my fireplace is, is jutting out just a little bit. Such a cute little cottage, right? I've been obsessed with English cottages for so long. I love the style of like the thatched roof, limestone, round little doors, which we're gonna do a little round door here. Let's put a window just right here on the other side of the fireplace. Okay, over here we're gonna have like this beam going horizontally and then just a little line underneath it. I'm not even sure what these are called, but you see them a lot with that like cottage style. Um, okay, we'll come back, add more details with paints later, but that feels like a good place to stop there. We'll have a tree that comes up just behind here. Don't worry about all the branches right now, but just draw two lines behind that little cottage. Over here, we're gonna have a, a split rail fence. So let's see, how about right here? Go ahead and draw a little line. And then we're gonna draw a few more lines and the lines are gonna be just gradually getting a little bit longer and a little bit more spaced apart. I think that's good, I'm just gonna draw those three. And then I will draw one rail falling down, one rail straight across, this one has two intact rails, and this one, same thing. Okay, back in here, just draw a couple more trees that are poking up. Over here, we'll have a few more little kind of grassy, grassy shrubs. And I think that that feels like a good place to get started with some painting. So I'm using my size eight or size six round brush. If you have a larger brush, you can definitely use a larger brush using, um, hey, my dad's in here. That's awesome. Hey, dad. <laughs> my dad's uh, in the chat, uh, Puckett Cigar Box Guitar. And he has an awesome YouTube channel. Really great stuff. He builds his own cigar box guitars, so. Okay, so I'm going to start with getting some, kind of this, we'll get some indigo, a little bit of burnt sienna, and we're gonna create this kind of stormy, cloudy, wintry sky. So I'm just gonna mix those two colors, and we're gonna use a ton of water here. So I'm just gonna start at the top. Use whatever larger, if you wanna use a larger brush than a six, definitely you can do that. Um, I think it's really nice to use a larger brush when you're doing these washes. Feels a little bit more natural. I kind of always say using a larger brush makes me a lot less fussy about details. One day I'm just gonna be using a size 20 brush for everything I do, just <laughs> an effort to be less controlling. I think I've said it before, but I do feel like becoming a mom it changed my art style. I think I, almost like as soon as I had Raphael, I felt this desire to start painting more of a loose style. And 
you could probably psychoanalyze that, but I think I just, maybe it was a realization of lack of control. Maybe it was a desire to be a little bit more relaxed. I have no idea what it is, but I still like to paint detailed sometimes, but I, I, I always try to incorporate a lot more loose looseness and just letting the water kind of do its thing. Kind of always trying to find a balance between control and loose detail. That's always what I'm striving for. So there's like a mastery of the techniques, but still this ability to just kind of let it, let it flow, let it happen. I think it's a good metaphor for life. Okay, so I'm just grabbing a little bit more of this burnt sienna, just dropping a couple spots where it's a little bit, uh, maybe there's some little cool moments in there. So we're kind of mixing the blue and the brown. Probably want to lean a little bit more into the blue, I would say. And that blue, when you mix it with brown, it just looks like gray, doesn't it? At first glance, it, I think it looks like gray, but then you realize it's like, oh no, there's actually some some nice color in there. So I'm trying to keep this spot here a little bit lighter so it's kind of like there's this cloudy area. This painting is, there's not a whole lot to it. It's a very, well, there is a lot to it, but it's, there's not a ton of detail. And um, we're gonna spend quite a quite a while on just kind of getting the, t the, the movement in the sky, getting that snowy ground. So it's not like a typical kind of, watercolor painting I do. And also, I will say, I, th I think I mentioned earlier, you know, I feel a little more comfortable teaching flowers than I do landscapes. So you might find that my pace is a little bit slower than normal. And I think that's just because I just need to think a little bit more than I typically do when I'm painting flowers. Something I really strongly believe in and try and encourage other people to do is just to never stop doing things that make you kind of uncomfortable or make you kind of nervous. And for me, well, I wouldn't say that painting landscapes make me nervous, but I do think that doing live classes, it kind of pushes me, um, especially painting something that I'm not used to painting, AKA like a landscape slash structure. So, Here's your encouragement today to try and do something that is a little out of your comfort zone. I find that whenever I stop doing things that make me kind of nervous, I think that's when I feel the most stagnant in life. Maybe you can relate to that as well. Okay, I'm really liking this this sky. You can see I'm really start. I'm really uh, trying to work it here. I think I need a little bit more depth, so I'm gonna grab just a little bit more of that indigo or blue mixture, whatever blue you have. Over here I have ultramarine blue, which I could use just as easily. Um, my uh, my buddy, Shada Campbell, she's an awesome YouTuber. If you haven't checked out her art videos, they're amazing. We're just like, you know, Instagram buddies. I've never met her in person. But anyways, she um, she has a really great channel if you guys haven't checked it out. Uh, you should definitely go check out hers. I can't remember why I brought her up. So, oh yeah, so she's really good about encouraging people just to use whatever colors they have. In fact, she often, when she paints, she's like, okay, I'm gonna grab yellow, I'm gonna grab red, I'm gonna grab pink. She doesn't actually say, okay, now I'm using Windsor and Newton, Alizarin and Crimson, you know, and I kind of appreciate that, that, you know, it's, you can totally just use whatever colors you have and it's gonna create something awesome. Definitely don't have to use the exact same colors as, as the tutorial you're following. Okay, so like I said, I wanna add a little bit more depth right in here. Let's add some more of this like grayish shadow in here, maybe over here. One thing I always do while I'm painting is I squint. I squint at the composition as a whole and see, see what's needed. Squinting always helps me to take in the picture as a whole instead of being too focused on like the tiny details. Another thing you can do is step back, but whenever you're sitting painting, which often you are when you're painting with watercolors, squinting is the next best thing to stepping back. It's kind of the same, gives you the same uh, effect. 
achieves the same thing, I guess. Okay, so I'm liking that sky. I'm gonna let that dry. Um, I'm gonna drop just a couple moments of just pure indigo in there. I love it. Oh, another great trick here while you're working, if, if you do anything you don't like, just use your paper towel and just lift it. I was doing that a lot while I was painting last night. Just lifting out that color, especially a sky, because I feel like you want to like add the dark values really intentionally. And if you drop too much color at once, that's a, a really great technique there. All right, let's go down to the, this snowy ground. Um, for this ground, what I want you to be mindful of is trying to keep white, keep trying to keep some white areas on the ground. Um, one th mistake I kind of kept making, I think when I was painting this one, not so much this ground here, but this one I think I, l I didn't leave enough white. So here we go, a, a real time critique of my own work here. But so I'm gonna use this, just this bluey, uh, brownie mixture here, <laughs> bluish brownish gray mixture here. And just keep reaching back for different colors. You don't want it all to be the same color, you know? You don't want it to be the same mixture every single time. So that's kind of why I keep going back and forth and back and forth. I try and mix, you know, grab a little bit that has a little bit more of the uh, burnt umber in it, maybe a little bit more burnt sienna, and then maybe I want to just grab a little bit more of a pure blue. And let's just kind of do these little dashes. And then I'm gonna start getting a little bit more pigment here. So I want a darker mixture. So I'm grabbing a little bit of blue, a little bit of brown, and then over here on the side of our little cottage, I want you to drop more of a, let's lean a little heavier into the blue. Drop some blue there, pull it to the right, especially just next to it, okay? So we're gonna start creating some shadow there using blue. Okay, I'm going to drop a little bit of extra blue here by the split rail, kind of create some shadow. If you ever look at snow, you'll notice that the shadows in snow are almost always blue or purple. So actually using purple could be a really great version, um, a, a great uh, color to use in this painting instead of blue if you wanted to. Okay. There we go. I'm not gonna get too fussy about details, but I do want to grab a little bit more orange. I like having the, the contrast. So orange and blue are complementary colors. They're opposite colors on the color wheel. And while this is very, it's a very subdued, desaturated painting, having those little moments of blue and orange, it brings it to life. So don't be afraid of just dropping little bits of color, even if it doesn't seem like it would make sense just, just go light and you'll find that as a whole, the composition is going to feel really nice because we're mixing in those colors. So the cottage is actually going to be kind of orange and the sky is mostly kind of brown. So we have that nice contrast of colors here. So let's go ahead and move over to the cottage. Um, and actually, sorry, one more detail here. I forgot about this, this little area behind the split rail. Go ahead and grab some yellow ochre and just drop in some color here. I am not gonna get fussy about these details because I want it to just feel sort of impressionistic. You can drop a little bit of the gray in there as well. I don't even know what kind of sharp this is. I don't wanna know. <laughs> We're just creating the impression of some sort of plant here. Okay, and then I'll do the same thing right over here with where these trees are. Trying to keep a little bit of a white space here so maybe it looks like there's a path leading over here into maybe a forest. Okay, I'm squinting at it. I like how it looks. Drop a little bit more color here. I'll drop down a bit right there. That's yellow ochre there, a little bit of yellow. Okay, so let's go ahead and get some color mixed for our cottage. So I think for the cottage, I'm gonna use um, burnt umber. 
Is that what color this is? Yeah, just brown. Let's just say brown. A little bit of burnt sienna. And like I said, I want this to be kind of like a, a very subtle orange, but mostly brown, but we're leaning into the warm side, so. And let's go ahead and you can use a smaller brush here if you want to. Um, as I said, I love using a big brush. I like that it makes it imperfect. It kind of helps to create a little bit of a loose, uh, a looser painting, which I really love. So even if it feels like it's too big, sometimes it's kind of it'll work. Sometimes it'll work to your work to your advantage here. So go ahead and let's color in, paint in this entire. Uh, we'll we'll do the the walls, not the fireplace, but just the walls of our little cottage here. And you guys should let me know in the uh, let me know in the comments if anybody has an opinion. What do you guys think of Thomas Kincaid paintings? Um, I've had a couple of lively conversation debates recently about his like cottage, his paintings, not, not the cottage, but just like his paintings in general. And I always kind of thought I, I always thought I liked his paintings. Um, and then I hadn't looked at them in, in many years. And then I looked back and I was like, um, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I really love cottages. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit undecided about whether I like his style or not. But undeniably, they're very, um, I, I think I do enjoy a style of art that's very exaggerated. And I think that that's kind of the beauty of art is you can kind of create these like exaggerations of what reality is in sometimes a happy way or even sometimes in a dark way. And I think that's um, what he does. He kind of creates these very utopian little uh, idealistic cottages. Uh, my husband is, is not, at all into Thomas Kincaid art. <laughs> um, but it's not bad. I just like, I think it's, I think it's good. But anyways, if you guys have an opinion, weigh in. I would, I would love to hear. It's kind of a fun, it's a fun debate. My mom loves uh, this movie called The Christmas Cottage. I think that's what it's called, Christmas Cottage. But it's all about his, him as a painter and his story. But I do love cottages, so maybe I do love his art. I don't know. I don't think I'd put it on my wall, but I think I objectively find it very sweet. I'll say that. Okay, so this is looking nice. So you'll notice I just dropped in a little bit of extra dark color underneath that roof line. I dropped in a little bit of darker color over here um, on the right side where it kind of makes sense. There'd be a little more shadow. So I just kind of do that by just adding a little bit more pigment. So adding a little bit of that brown, adding a little bit too of the of the blue color. And we're making this right wall a little bit more in shadow. So you can see that there's shadow over here on the ground, shadow here on the side of our, our cottage, shadow underneath the roof line. And you can see there's shadow over here on the split behind, uh, underneath where the split rail is gonna be put in. So we're, we're gonna imagine our light source is coming this way, just like it is in real life, actually. Kind of works out perfectly, huh? Okay, so let me think here. I'm going to do the roof. I'm gonna add just a little bit of this blue color to the top of my roof here, just a little bit. I'm not overthinking the details there. Maybe there's a little bit of snow on the roof. Maybe it's just a light roof. And then just underneath it, grab a little bit of brown, mix it in with your blue here. I'm gonna do just a slightly more brown layer right here. You'll notice these like kind of thatched roofs, roof, roofs, roof, roofs. <laughs> My husband says I say, I, I say roof wrong. I say roof, like R-U-F instead of roof. <laughs> but underneath this roof, um, just drop kind of a light brown layer, kind of has that layered thatched, um, uh, roof type. Okay, so that looks good. Let that dry. I have some nice little bleed moments in here. I love it. I'm going to let it happen. I'm going to grab some more burnt sienna, so that orange, and I'm going to drop it in here in just a few spots. Let it kind of bleed in with the water, do its thing.
Um, let's go ahead and paint our door as well. So the door, what if we did a yellow ochre door? So just choose yellow. You can do a bright yellow, muted yellow. You could do red, you could do white, you could do a blue door, anything you want. I'm gonna do yellow. Still using my larger brush here. I think I'm only gonna end up using the small brush for some of the details in the fireplace, some of the very final. I'm gonna add a door knob and some hinges to this little door. But I'm mostly gonna be using this size six brush today. Go ahead and mix this yellow ochre in with a little bit of brown. So let's do a little bit of yellow ochre, burnt sienna, and let's paint our fireplace. So I want the fireplace to be that limestone color, so a very warm yellow. Nice rock fireplace here. Speaking of rocks, Dad, if you're still up in the chat there, I was thinking about this morning that I need to ask you to bring me some more rocks from the from the Jemez. My parents live up in an area where they have a lot of a lot of big rocks on their property, so they've brought me some some rocks for our garden and I have I have garden plans and I got <laughs> I need some rocks. <laughs> Okay, love it. Let it dry, we'll come back. Uh, let's go to the split rail. So for the split rail, go ahead and grab some burnt sienna and grab some indigo or blue, or you can grab just burnt sienna, but just grab brown. And I am going to do kind of, I think I'm gonna make it a little bit lighter to start. So I'm kind of trying to dilute it, maybe grab a little bit of water and let's, paint these little posts here. So I'm gonna start light and then I'm gonna add some darker values here in, in a few. Here's the split rail that's falling, the one that's still intact. Let it dry, we'll come back, we're gonna add some definition, make these, uh, these posts look awesome. Um, let's now, our sky should be pretty dry. I'm gonna use a similar color. I'm gonna add actually a little bit of blue. And so I wanna kinda create this blue, gray, nope. Oh. Hmm, what color is this? I would say let's, let's create a color that leans towards the brown, but is very light and definitely desaturated. And we're gonna paint our trees, okay? So I want it to be light. And I want it to be light because I want it to have the impression that it's a foggy day, like a wintry, foggy day. Okay, so let's go ahead and start up here. Go ahead and draw in this tree and the one right next to it. I'm trying to make my lines not too perfect, not too straight. Let's draw some branches. Less is more here. I learned that when I was sketching this out a couple times. I, less is more in the form of color, so make it light. We can add darker values later. If, you, if your trees are a little too heavy, just grab your paper towel, lift out that color. Another thing you can do is just grab water and just rub water over your trees and then blot again. The trees are not the, the star of the show here. They are, they are meant to be a support for the cottage. The cottage is the, the kind of main focus. That's a mistake people often make is trying to make, I, I mean, I'm talking like I'm a, expert in landscapes. I'm definitely not, but I, I know a few tricks. And I think one one mistake people can make, depending on the style, is to try and make everything really detailed. And then I think that the eye doesn't know quite where to land. I think it's nice when there's an obvious focal point. And that might just be personal preference, but I, I think it's a good tip especially for the style of painting that I like to do. Okay, so well, that's good. Let's give that a second to dry and let's move over here to, to these little trees here. Okay, 
little branches coming off of these ones. Over here, I'm gonna just add the tiniest little impression of some more branches coming out of this shrubby area. Not too much, I'm gonna blot what I'm doing. I don't want the focus to be here, I want the focus to be right here. So, like I said, everything is just supporting the cottage here. Okay, let's now get another, if you already have some dark mixture here on your palette, reach into it. So indigo, burnt umber, and it's gonna, I'm gonna start adding some darker values to this little cottage here. So I'm gonna start with these beams here, these support beams on the house. So it's that horizontal one and then the diagonal. Um, the cottage windows, go ahead and paint in these squares, but keep white around the edges. What do you think? Something like that? It feels nice. Um, and then I'm gonna drop in this dark color again underneath the, uh, the, the roof line. Uh, just over here on the side of the fireplace. Kind of makes sense that there would be a little bit of shadow there. And then just a little bit back here on the, the right side of the house as well. Just underneath that line of the roof as well. I actually really like painting this style. I don't, I definitely don't do it enough. For a while I was getting really into painting um, Churches, I was doing these adobe churches. I think it was last summer, that sounds right. I can't even remember, I think it was last summer. Maybe it was the year before, I don't know. Anyways, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed painting that, that like structures. Um, I always thought it was harder than it actually is. It's a little bit hard, but it's not, it's not that hard. It's definitely doable. And yeah, then I, I stopped doing it for a while, but I think I kind of want to get back into it. Okay, so let's now, I think I'm actually going to switch to the small brush sooner than I thought. So I'm switching to a size two, switch to whatever you got. Let's now, let's see, my door is dry. So let's add some details to this door. I'm gonna draw a little, uh, actually to start with, let's do just some pure blue. And let's create some shadow in that doorway. Just using pure indigo here. And just creating a little bit of shadow in that door frame. Maybe a little bit of extra dark here at the top. Okay, and then I'm going to now do a door handle and then two beams or hinges, I guess. All right, I'm squinting at it, seeing what else it needs. I'm gonna let it dry. Let's go over to the split rail. So go back to your brown mixture here. And what we'll do is thinking about where the light is. We got a couple of three, I got three beams here. Went too far down there. And then go ahead and do some lines just underneath these beams here. Let's think here. Okay, adding a little bit of a dark kind of circle to where those uh, where those beams are going into the uh, the standing posts. And you can really make those posts dramatic if you want to. Depends how much attention you want to draw to it. You know, the darker they are, the more it's gonna kind of pull the eye in that direction, which is which is fine. I think it's it's nice too because it has like this line that kind of I feel like it's like kind of pointing to the little cottage, which just kind of helps to further create that um, focal point. Okay, so I'm gonna grab a little bit more blue, I'm gonna drop it right here on the ground in the snow, 
little bit more back in here. I'm gonna grab some brown, drop that in there as well. Um, I'm gonna drop a little bit of burnt sienna back in here. I kind of want to maybe create the impression that maybe there's something back here behind these trees. Maybe there's a, a barn, maybe there's a dense forest back there. There's just something beyond this little cottage. Don't need to know exactly what it is, but just you can just drop some color in there and just kind of let it bleed around. Okay, uh, let's go to our fireplace. So I'll grab some at this point, I don't know what a mix in here. There's just a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of mixing here. I don't know what the ratio is, the recipe, if you will. But I'm gonna grab some yellow ochre, some of this darker brown mixture, create something. You know, the more you paint, the more you probably understand that this is just kind of how it goes, right? After a while, you're just like, okay, what do I, what am I mixing here? But it's, it becomes intuitive. Like you just know what you like, you know what colors look kind of good together as you're working, so. Anyways, okay, so over here on the right side of our uh, fireplace, go ahead and drop in a darker color, a darker version of this yellow. So that's yellow ochre with a little bit of a darker mix in there as well. I think for it to be uh, te technically, I think the correct way to, to mix shadow, I think there's a few different ways to do it, but mixing that complementary color, so blue, so yellow ochre, which is what this is, with a little bit of blue, it's, it's gonna create this shadow color. Does that make sense? But you know, I've seen people create shadow in all kinds of different ways. That's just kind of a good rule of thumb. Okay, that looks awesome, I really like, I love this little fireplace. And then kind of starting up here at the top, let's just, I'm not gonna get too fussy about details, but we'll just kind of draw these horizontal lines, just kind of give the impression of some, some bricks in here. Down here at the bottom, let's draw these bigger like limestone blocks. And at this point, I'm gonna move my painting out of the frame here because I don't wanna I don't wanna compare these final details with what I'm doing now, to be in the moment, right? It's always gonna turn out a little bit different every time. And that's cool, I gotta embrace what, what's going on in this one. I'm gonna grab a little bit of orange. Maybe find a few moments to drop some orange color in here. Just a tiny bit. So I'm gonna do some little dashes here and there. If your details are a little too dark, just grab your paper towel, blot it, just lift it out just a little bit. I'm gonna grab more indigo and I'm going to drop it in here, really create some drama here underneath that roof line. Maybe a little bit more blue over here. Just kind of finding little spots where it would make sense that there's a little more shadow. Uh, let's grab some blue or some brown and I'm gonna just go over these beams here. I'm gonna repaint my little doorknob because I kind of lost that. It kind of bled into the blue that I painted in the door frame there. Cleaning my brush off. Uh, one more detail I'll do here on the fireplace is just kind of draw that line here, just along the top. Okay, I'm squinting. I'm squinting at my painting, taking it all in. I'm gonna now go back to these trees back here. I'm gonna add a little bit more of this brown mixture. Like I said, kind of creating that foresty look back there dropping some brown, a couple moments of blue as well. All right, so some of the final details here for this painting. I am going to grab this brown mixture and for these trees, 
I'm gonna add just a tiny bit. Okay, so I'm gonna add just this light brown and just add a um, little bit of these darker values. Not everywhere, just in a few spots. And this is a, a moment for you to really, you know, make some creative decisions here. You, you get to decide how much detail you want to add to these trees. Maybe a little, maybe a lot. Like I said, I kind of want it to feel like it's foggy back there. So maybe there's some, some little lost and found lines. Like there's kind of fog in between branches and between trees. You can, you can use, like I said, use a large brush and just smooth out those trees with water and that'll create that really nice, soft, misty look. Couple, couple more moments in here. Keeping it super light. Blotting it out if I I'm a little too heavy-handed. I'm gonna add a little bit more color to this roof line. And I, you know, what you wanna do is wait until your painting is totally dry to erase any pencil markings. Um, I don't think I'm gonna do that in real time because I don't wanna accidentally <laughs> move any color. But yeah, probably in another five, 10 minutes, I'll, I'll come back and erase what pencil markings I can. It, it, there's not very much. This was not a heavy sketch uh, painting today, but maybe a couple of little wispies that are kind of reaching over into this path. Maybe just here at this, the base of these split rail um, beams, maybe just a couple of little sprigs coming out of the snow, as well as here in the snow. I always like that look, you know, whenever you see like grasses kind of poking out of the snow keeping it light all right i think that that is that's feeling good to me um just take an inventory here if there's anything else i want to do yeah i think i like it it's subtle it feels like a nice soft subtle painting so after you're done you can sign your artwork and then once it's totally dry, I'll take off the masking tape, erase what I can. And just for fun, I'll go ahead and pull up the other two that I did. Uh, just so I, I like to do, uh, you know, art critiques. I don't know if critique is the, it's not the best word, but just kind of analysis and see what I like, see what I don't like. I think, yeah, I definitely like the composition of these two, with the smaller house. There was something really nice in this one that I, that I kind of missed. I think it had some nice colors, a little bit darker, a little bit moodier, but super fun. So anyways, time for me to go. Um, I think my, my husband and kids are back. So I will see you again soon. There will be, uh, you can rewatch the live replay of this and be sure to go find the link if you want the sketch and the supplies list. So I'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much for being here. Um, have a good day. Bye.